Oh, hey guys. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I am really excited about this new range mask um, option in the new Lightroom CC. So if you haven't already, you do have to update your Lightroom Classic CC. Um, and that's what's going to give you some of these new options that you've added to play around with. So what I, I'm going to show you how I used it on this image and then just kind of a few basics about how it works. Um, so on this one, this is the completed image. And this is what it looked like before I added the range masking. So you can see it really um, altered the look and feel of this image a lot. Um, before, this was just something I would have had to have gone into Photoshop to do, which I just don't do. I stay in Lightroom for all of my edits. Um, I just, my galleries are so big, it would take me a really long time to Photoshop everything, which is something that I used to do. So um, I really like to um, just be able to speed up my workflow as much as possible. Um, of course, anytime you're doing masking, it's going to make it harder to batch edit, but because of range masking, I do feel like it may be easier. So this series of images, I can batch edit and it will be easier to move the masks around um, so that it's only affecting the colors that I want it to affect. And that's what it is. So basically if I'm making a selection, so we'll go ahead and do the dress. So this is going to work on the brush and the radial filter and the graduated filter all the same. You have the same options. So, um, but for me, I'm just going to use the brush. So I really wanted to bring out all of the red in her dress without affecting like the shadows and saturation of the rest of the image. So, oh, let me um, delete all of my other ones. So you can see I added it to the rocks. I added it, that was the pin I just put in. I added it to her dress, I did her back, and I did the sky. Okay, so that brings us back to uh, where I started. So I did an edit on this image already. And then I'm just going to select her dress. And what you can do so you can see your selection easier if you want, you can just like bring your exposure up or down. You can saturate it um, or you can hit the letter O and that's going to show you where you're masking. So you can just do a very sloppy mask, just making sure that you are um, selecting all of the area you wish to change. So I've got my mask. I'm going to hit O, and that's going to make that um, red go away again. So you can see it's affecting the water, so it just is very obvious what we've done. Um, so I'm going to go down to Range Mask, and I'm going to go to Color. And now I can select this dropper and I can drop a point anywhere on her dress and that's telling it to only affect the red. Um, alternatively, I can um, click down and drag out so that I'm kind of getting more of a range of all of the reds that are in her dress. And that's probably gonna be more helpful when um, you have a color near a similar color so for this, this red dress is just uh, surrounded by blue, so that makes it a little bit easier. I feel like I missed over here and kind of around her back still seems a little bit dark. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm the worst. <laughs> okay. So um, really what I want to do with this though is I want to saturate the red. So I'm just going to bring up my saturation and I want to bring up the shadows. And maybe I'll bring up the exposure just a little bit as well. I might bring up the contrast. Okay. And so now I'm going, I want to do her back. I just want to bring up the exposure on her back basically. So I'm just selecting her back right here. Oh, I think I just added that to the other one. Sorry, I need to do a new one. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm just selecting her back. 
and then I'm going to go back to color and I'm going to bring up the exposure and it's only affecting her back. I might add a little bit of contrast. I don't like how I'm losing all the shadows there in her back. There we go. Um, and then we can do the sky. So um, I could do a graduated filter, although I don't care for like a gradient of the effect I'm going to do. I just kind of want it to like globally affect the sky and that's, I just want to darken it basically. Maybe um, play with that blue color just a little bit. So again, I'm just gonna make a new brush. I'm just gonna brighten it just so I can see where I am with it. And I'm just gonna go over the sky, and of course I'll be going over her head and body, which before was always kind of the hard part about um, doing anything with the skies. If your subject was coming into the horizon, um, then you just had to try and erase them off with the brush, which was still kind of sloppy and could leave halos and things like that. So um, we're just gonna come down to range mask, color again, and um, select our little dropper. And then I'm just going to select like a range of colors right here. And so now you can see that it um, took the selection off of her. Also, I can hit the Alt Option key. And as I move this around, you can actually see the mask. So this um, is a lot more, um, narrower so you're going to have more abrupt changes in color and then um or not changes in color but just kind of masking where it's going to meet your subject and then all the way to 100 is going to meet, be a much like softer transition and i notice like depending on what it was i was doing to the colors um sometimes it can just be more or less obvious like around the edges if you've masked around or not um, and you can see also that it's uh, a little less picky about the colors. So it is picking up some color in her back at zero and then at 100 it is not. Okay. Um, so I wanted to bring down the exposure just a little bit and I just want to add some um, contrast to my sky. So I'm going to add some contrast and maybe drop some highlights and bring up the shadows. And I may bring up the amount again just a little bit. And then also um, you can watch, so you can drop like I think five of these different pins throughout the sky. So I can also just drop them around on like the different blues and the white areas and tell it, um, oh, by, sorry, I need to hit shift. I just was started playing around with this yesterday. So this is how you drop like the multiple droppers all around the different colors. And can brighten or darken all of those. So it's that's really awesome. I'm going to change our amount. Um, and then I'm going to do the rocks. I just wanted to add some more contrast there. So I'm going to do a new brush, go around these rocks. Just depends like the look that you're going for. I'm just trying to um, like selectively add contrast to all of the different places in this image. Um, so I'm going to reset that exposure, bring up the contrast again, bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows and then come down here to my mask again, go to color. And then because there's a range of browns, I'm just gonna hold it down and select like an area of those browns.
And then just by hitting O, I can see um, where that mask is falling, which is helpful if you did need to like go in and brush it off of something. But I don't, it doesn't seem clear that it's in the water at all to me. So um, close that. And then that's R before and after. And again, you can see the before and after of the brushes like this. Um, and then just one more thing that I will show you because um, you may have noticed there's um, a color option and then there's also a luminance option. So um, for instance, and we'll just do a graduated filter to show how this works. I'm just going to drag the graduated filter down and then I'll reset the exposure. And I'm going to go to range mask luminance. Okay. So how this works, and so we'll bring the exposure down as if we were going to darken our sky, which is um, what I sometimes use this graduated filter for. When I do it, I like to make it really big so it's a little more gradual, a little less obvious what I'm doing. Um, so we can bring that down, and then you have this range to play with. So as you bring down to zero, what you're doing is only affecting the darker parts of the image. So watch the dark parts of the sky as I bring the exposure down. And of course, this is on her as well. I haven't seen that I can use the combination of the luminance and the color at the same time. So you have to pick one. And for me, the color seems to be working best most of the time. Um, so it's going to darken any of the shadows on her as well as it's darkening the sky. Um, and then alternatively, you can go, you can bring your lower end up, and then it's only going to affect the highlight parts of the image. And so if you just wanted to do mid-tones or something, you could bring these both in. Um, so I think I liked it mostly when it was affecting some of the darker parts and just making them darker, which is what I want really when I'm adding contrast in. Um, and then, oh, with the smoothness, um, again, and I showed you that in the color. So if you go left, it's just going to be more of uh, more abrupt. And then as you move to the right, it kind of softens that effect. So more harsh this way, which for this one I think looks best because um, the smoothness all the way to the right kind of affects way more than I want it to. So. Anyway, um, and again, um, that alt option works here as you are moving your keys around so you can see what it's affecting. You can see it's affecting everything, so the whole range of everything right there. And then um, as I move this one over here, you can see, so the mask is the black, so that's what it's not affecting. So you can see how it's affecting like the highlight parts of the clouds. And then again, as I move closer to the zero, it's affecting the um, darker parts. Okay, cool, that's all. Um, we should delete that, that looks terrible. <laughs> um, and I already darkened and did what I wanted to to the sky. So this is the before image, and this is after the edit and after applying the range masking. Um, Hope you enjoyed this little video and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.